Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to the Biblical Perspective for Saturday, May the 21st, 2022. Get you a good cup of coffee and come join me as we just have a front porch discussion about one of the horns of the beast. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. This is the fourth in our series as we're just talking about some of those things affecting our world today that line up with biblical prophecy. Now, coming to you today from Lebanon, Tennessee, today is happy birthday, Hannah Day. Hannah Mercer, our oldest granddaughter, turned 17 today. So happy birthday, Hannah. We're going to have a great partying time a little bit later today. But in the meantime, I want you to think about what's going on in the world because those ten horns of the end time beast that Daniel talked about are being made more and more evident every day. And what do we mean by a horn? They're described in the Bible as ten kings, those that will have control in this worldwide empire that's in control when Jesus returns. And are we seeing that empire come together today? An attempt to rule the world through a handful of people who want to impose their will on us? Yes, we are seeing it happen. And so some of those folks that obviously, you know, take part in that stand out. As we looked at last week, uh, Xi Jinping from China, you, you'd almost expect that to be, that person, expect him to be one of the horns of the beast because he's the dictator ruling the most populous nation in the world. But there are others that you don't seem to think about, and it's because they come to rule not by being put in power as a dictator, a prime minister, a president of a country. They come to power because of their wealth, their finances. And the one we're going to look at today fits that category. His name is Bill Gates. Bill doesn't look like an imposing world figure, one that you should be afraid of. In fact, he looks very much like the computer nerd that you think he would be. He's the founder of Microsoft. When he's interviewed, as he is regularly, almost daily, uh, he doesn't look like the kind of figure that any of us should be scared of. Yet I'm here to tell you that Bill Gates has power and control over your life in some areas that you may be shocked to discover. Now, most of us understand that from Microsoft, we are busy using his software even today, some of the products that he helped develop over time, and you may be using a computer, maybe even watching today's show on a computer that has that PC operating system in it. But that's not what we're talking about. The fact is, Bill earned his billions through Microsoft, but it's what he has done with those after that sets him up as one of the horns of the beast. You see, a lot of rich people do the same thing. They will say, oh, I need to look like I am really concerned about humanity, so rather than spending all this money on myself, I'm going to set up a charitable cause. Now watch out, the charitable cause, which in Bill's case is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, is something that not only will I use to control what's going on in the world, but if you want to get in on my good side, you can donate to my foundation, my charitable cause, my way of saving humanity. Now is that is Bill really thinking that he has some kind of impact and can be able to save humanity? Almost certainly he does. As he traveled around the world, he tried to impress upon us that there are a couple of things that needed to happen if we were going to save humanity. Number one, we need to give everyone an identification. An identification. Now, I don't know about you, but I know who I am. My friends and family knows who I am. The folks at my church, my community, where I live, they know who I am. Uh, I, I don't need another ID to be identified in the world. I'm fine with what I've got. But yet, he said, no, you need an identification, one that is good all the way around the world so that we will know who you are. Now, who's the we? Now, that's what you need to be concerned with. But along with this identification, we need to give you a vaccination. In fact, he famously said, maybe stumbled when he said it, that we could control the problems associated with world population 
if we'll just get everyone an identification and a vaccination. Now, how does that help? Let your mind go crazy. Yes, a lot of conspiracy theories have popped up about that. But listen, you don't have to worry about the conspiracy theories. All you have to worry about is what Bill has actually said and done. He's written several books. One is about how to prevent the world from being destroyed through climate change. So he's really big on the whole climate change issue. Yes, he fits the model of those green kingdom leaders today. But the one he just came out with was how to prevent the next pandemic. Now he's talked about this for years. Go back and look at some of his TED Talks and other interviews where he's talked about how important it is for us to be able to, yes, to use one of Donald Trump's phrases at warp speed, to be able to develop vaccines, to get them out there, and to be able to line people up rapidly to get those shots in your arms or other parts of your body that you may need to make sure everyone is protected. Now, what might be in those shots is a whole different ball game. And yes, that lends itself to a lot of conspiracies, some of which obviously aren't true, but we don't have to worry about the fake stuff. You just have to worry about what is real. Now, when it comes to those people that control your life, Bill Gates not only understands the, the need to control what goes into the bodies of human beings and that we can identify every human being on the planet, he also understands that it's important to control the food supply. That's why, yes, it is Bill Gates that is the single biggest owner of farmland in the United States. Now, the people he has to compete with in that are folks like Communist China, believe it or not. We talked about that last week. Who, who's buying up all the farmland in the world? Whoever's doing it, you need to be concerned that they might have some motives that wouldn't be especially pure, shall we say. <laughs> well, in light of all of this, I want to emphasize what happened this week because Bill Gates is a partner with the World Health Organization. Now, the World Health Organization is not one of those groups that uh, most of us are excited about. They've shown that they mess up more than any, and in particular, they are so susceptible to being bribed, pushed, and controlled by those powerful people in the world that, and, and this was made evident during COVID-19 when it immediately Word should have gotten out about this pandemic, about how destructive it was going to be and how we could protect ourselves. But instead, because of the power and influence of the Chinese Communist Party on the WHO, they said nothing. Matter of fact, it contradicted what we now know to be facts, saying, oh, don't worry about this. It's fine. Don't restrict travel. Uh, the, and don't worry about these people coming from China. They're not going to bring you anything. <laughs> Yeah, and so the WHO really messed that up first class. Well, Bill and his relationship with them is scary because uh, they are now in a position just this week. This has just been happening. Just this week, a treaty is being discussed where, yes, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, is not only hand in glove with this whole movement to hand over the WHO to the WHO power over your body in a time of pandemic or some kind of other health emergency, that they are actually pushing a treaty that is more, uh, I want to say, surrendering of your rights than was initially even proposed. Now, go back and catch the entire transcript or watch the video of, of Tucker Carlson Tonight, which yesterday was uh, an episode in which he dealt with all of these things going on. Because a lot of questions that are popping up right now about this treaty really should be answered, yet nobody's going to answer them. No one has control over who's going to sign this treaty outside of the Joe Biden administration in the United States. And so we've got to start asking some hard questions. In particular, Carlson said, well, what qualifies exactly as a public health emergency? Well, they don't define that, but they get to. You see, they get to decide what a public health emergency is, and then 
they have total authority. You can see where this is going. Now the Biden administration has made certain that unelected bureaucrats, the WHO, have total authority to declare and define public health emergencies. They did it explicitly. The White House eliminated a provision that would have required the WHO to, quote, consult with an attempt to obtain verification from the state party in whose territory the event is allegedly occurring in. Well, it sounds like a good protection, doesn't it? He goes on to say, so as originally written, they couldn't do anything without the permission of their member country's governments. But thanks to the change that the Biden administration pushed, effectively there is no limit at all on the WHO's power, and then it gets worse from there. The treaty also mandates a whole-of-government and a whole-of-society approach to pandemic preparedness. Now, this is all outlined in Bill's book. You can get it right now on Amazon. You can pick this thing up, the very source of the philosophy, Bill Gates is the man, to tell you exactly why you should hand over all of your freedoms and let someone else tell you what's important to do with your body during one of these, quote, health emergencies. Now listen to Carlson as he goes on and talks about this. He said, think about that. Every society is always preparing for a pandemic, and that means there will not be a moment ever when the WHO doesn't have operational control over so-called public health matters in this country. Now, what's that going to mean exactly? Well, you've already guessed. It's not really about public health. It never is. But before we tell you what exactly it's going to mean, you should know that None of this is going to be optional. Thanks to an amendment from the Biden administration, the treaty contains a provision for a compliance committee. Oh, there's always the stick. It provides that every member country in the WHO must, quote, inform WHO about the establishment of its national competent authority responsible for overall implementation of the IHR that will be recognized and held accountable, end quote. Oh, friends, it's scarier. It means we're going to have more government bureaucrats who are now in control of your body during a, quote, health emergency, and you never gave them that permission. Oh, no, it was just handed over to them by an administration that doesn't have a slight chance of getting reelected because they are so bad. But yet right now, they're in control, and there's nothing you or I can do about it. Listen to go as he goes on. And again, I don't want to get into uh, all the details of this article. You need to read it. Who's in control of the WHO right now? How people are reacting to this? Oh, it's, it's so scary. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci even talks about the current leader, a, a communist wacko, current leader of the WHO, by saying, oh, he's an outstanding person. I've known him from the time that he was Minister of Health in Ethiopia. I mean, obviously, over the years, anyone who says that the WHO is, has not had problems has not been watching, but I think under his leadership, they've, they've done very well. Of course, Anthony Fauci would think that. This is the same person who has revealed that he perhaps is more of a Marxist than we ever imagined. And no, you didn't elect him to anything, but yet what happened? He's been given a salary bigger than the President of the United States. And even though the current crisis with COVID is supposedly over, he's still drawing a check and still sitting in on shows and still... Uh, even though he contradicts himself over and over again, is still pouring out that same garbage. This is all in the same bucket that is held by Bill Gates, financed by him, even to the point that Bill Gates' own foundation even has power over how this news gets out. Yes, because the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has been for some time working through some of the most prominent educational institutions in the world providing scholarships to those people who will enter journalism and reporting and will sit in front of the cameras and tell you what Bill wants you to know. It's a vicious cycle, a vicious wheel, because 
you're not going to get on television and then contradict the person that paid for your education, paid for the place that you're sitting in right now. Uh, I mean, you're hook, line, and sinker now devoted to following this person that has set you up. Now, you're supposed to interpret everything the right way to all the people that are listening to you, which is why so much of the media today is polluted and corrupted. It's all about who holds the cash, who has the purse strings, who's financing the big deal. That's why when you when you watch, for example, some of the morning shows that uh, are a part of what we call the legacy media, and they list their sponsors at the beginning, and you hear names like Pfizer a hundred times in the morning. Wait a minute. What's, what's Pfizer doing sponsoring a show that then will have to report on what Pfizer has been doing supposedly objectively? Well, that's not going to happen. Have you been asking the question why they are now, as they did again in the past week, trying to get you to put a vaccine into the bodies of your 5 to 11-year-old children that was made to address a very first uh, a first pandemic virus that is no longer even out there, but yet they're saying, put this in your body. It's going to help somehow. Have you noticed that people who've received that vaccine are getting COVID? And if you follow some of the surveys, you'll notice they're getting it at a higher rate than unvaccinated people. Why is this happening? Because it is totally useless. It's old. It's outdated. It doesn't even address the current variant. But we're being told, oh, no, 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 it's good. For you. you know, every little bit helps here. Get your vaccine. Get your booster. Get your second booster. Don't worry. We'll have more boosters coming down the road as long as we can keep the money faucet open, flowing to Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and all these wonderful people, then you're going to be blessed. So just keep taking the shots, my friends. That's all that really matters. Well, friends, it gets so corrupt to me that when you look at what Bill is behind, especially with the World Health Organization, you have to wonder what the ultimate goal is. Is there some kind of plan, as some of you conspiracy theorists have suggested, that some of these things being put in our bodies are going to affect our ability to have immunity toward other diseases? Is it going to allow the population to have a little bit higher death rate so that we can get some of these people out of the way and won't have to feed them? Is it going to allow us to perhaps be a little more sterile, not nearly as reproductively uh, you know, able to keep producing so many children. You see, the whole idea here is we've got to save Mother Earth. We've got to recognize that it's the planet. It's about the green new kingdom we've entered here. And if we don't save the planet, then none of us can survive. So all of a sudden, you've got this new, uh, new devotion to the new green religion that's got to be pumped every single time that these people talk so that you can recognize your purpose is not so much to do what you want to do, but it's for you to be a part of the collective, the collective that's going to save the planet, because ultimately it's about Mother Earth. We worship and adore her and must keep her safe from all the terrible things we do to her. Get out of your SUVs, quit eating those Big Macs, quit doing all the things that's harming the planet. You, you, you are the problem, you carbon-based life form that breathes out carbon dioxide and it's messing up the planet. You got to stop all this mess. So how are we going to get you to behave? We're going to put you under the thumb of bureaucrats that have never been elected with groups like the World Health Organization that are going to control you completely. If Bill has his way, he'll be lining you up for a new shot every single year and he'll make sure that you, because you're identified You've got that wonderful computerized identification system operating all over the world. You'll not be able to hide that you will be seen as a person. If you reject these notions that they're passing down, you'll be seen as a person that is bad for society, bad for humanity. And ultimately, as we'll see in some of the other horns of the beast, they'll even make it difficult for you to have a job or go to the grocery store. Well, that's taking off down another tangent, but that's exactly where we're going. But back to this WHO treaty that's being worked on this week. 
According to the treaty, Carlson writes, those vaccines and essential medicines, because it gets better on every page, will be distributed not on the basis of need, but on the basis of equity. Oh my goodness, there's that word again. Equity is quoted, uh, as quoted says, quote, critically important for global health, both as a principle and as a outcome. Now, that's what the treaty declares. So equity has to be at the tip top here. Therefore, he goes on to say, the World Health Organization will ensure equitable and effective access to vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, and essential supplies and for clinical trials, quote unquote. And that means, again, quoting them, quote, health care workers and the most vulnerable will have priority access. Now, note what it's saying. Not the sickest, not the people who need the medicine the most, but the most vulnerable in a larger sense. In other words, favored groups will get medicine first. Now, there's no graver violation of medical ethics than this. Every physician practicing in the United States promises not to do what you just heard, and it would become mandatory under this treaty. And by the way, the language you just heard is exactly the justification that officials in several states threw out when they were caught passing out vaccines based on race. This is a power grab. It's dangerous. It is, by the way, a reward to the very people who screwed up two years of COVID response. Oh, let's give them more power. This is lunacy, and people who know that it's happening are upset. Now, I could keep reading this article, but I want to encourage you to go check it out yourself. Get the, uh, the live YouTube video or something else to see uh, what Carlson says about all of this. But it goes right in line with exactly what one person wants of you. His name is Bill Gates. I believe he's one of the horns of the beast, and he travels all over the world. He does the interviews. He keeps raking money into that foundation to do one thing get you identified, get whether that's by putting a tattoo on you, a chip under your skin, a card in your pocket, but you've got to be identified for the whole world. And then secondly, because of that identification, you've got to line up now. And whatever Bill and his WHO cohort, cohort say have, has got to be pumped into your body, you've got to just say yes. Come on and give me my shot. Please don't hurt me. I don't know what's in it. I don't know why you're giving it to me, but hey, it's the next thing they say we've got to have. So come on, give me the jab. That's the whole purpose behind right now Bill's attempt to, with his last two books, save the planet on one side and then prevent the pandemic on the other. Friends, it's all about controlling who we are. And that's what the beast is all about in these last days. But you know what? The fact that we see this beast operating and forming around the world indicates the most wonderful thing of all. With all this depressing news, it indicates that Jesus is coming because all the things, all the things he predicted that would be happening, taking place in that last generation from the Old Testament prophecies to the New Testament prophecies, they are all coming to pass. That's why you and I have reason to rejoice this morning. We have reason to look up and get excited because our Savior is not going to let this world go completely to pot. He's going to let it teeter on the edge so we'll see just how stupid our, our ideas can be. And then he's going to come back and save it. Why? Because Jesus keeps his promises, unlike some of these other crazy people that run our world right now. You can bank on it, my friends. Jesus is coming. And I'm excited that he's coming back for me. Is he coming back for you? God bless you. I'll see you again next week as we wake up in the word. And next Saturday as we'll look at another candidate for horns of the beast. God bless you.